Hello, my name is Kirioth, and yesterday I set myself a challenge. I gave myself one hour to see how much of my Chaos Knight I could paint. It's the one with the Vulcan Megabolter of a Chaos Warhound, acting as two Avenger Gatling cannons, and it's been sitting in my pile of base-coated, or at least sprayed, but with nothing else on it for quite some time. I really wanted to get round to painting this, and I thought it would be fun to go through and essentially tell you what I was doing in detail as I was doing it. A nice middle ground between making a video and painting my night. Unfortunately, there was an issue. I sat there, I recorded for an hour, I painted for an hour, and then discovered that I had no audio whatsoever. So, as a compromise, we have this. This is the time-lapsed footage of that hour. I've sped it up so you're going to get the entire process, but in 10 minutes as opposed to 60. And rather than go through everything in exhaustive detail, I'm just going to talk you through what I've done when I've done it. So, to start with, what I'm doing right now is just getting a coat of hex lichen from Vallejo across all of the, all of the sections that I want to be purple. This is not a particularly delicate or precise <laughs> point of the of the painting of this night. For stuff like this, I tend to just get as much paint on the brush as I feel like and go for it. There's not really any point in being careful. Anything that you go over can be tidied up after the fact. And uh, this is less of the kind of the the dry brushing technique that you use with these brushes, and more of just using the fact that the extra large is such a large brush to cover as much area as possible as quickly as possible. It's not a completely smooth coat all the way, it's a little bit thicker in some places than others, but that's something that I've done on all the vehicles I've painted like this. I like having a little bit of variation in the, uh, in the colour that goes across that lead belcher base coat. Then moved on to Warlord Purple. Now, wall or purple, pretty much the same process again. Just going over all of the armor plates, not being particularly careful, not really trying to get every single section of armor. It's more a case of just getting a nice, a nice pink tinge to the, the dark purple that we just put on. Now once this section was done, I moved on to a completely different colour. I moved on to Huldra Blue from Scale 75, which is a really nice, deep, dark blue. It's the stage before using Adriatic Blue, from uh, again, from, from Scale. And for this one, I had a moment where I wasn't sure which brush I wanted to use. I wanted to use the large Series D, but I have a new one, and I have the one that I got originally. The one I got originally is worn down significantly. I've used that brush a lot, and as such, the head is only about half the half the length of the new one. For this, I went for the older one. Now, really, it shouldn't make that much of a difference, and in fact, I would suggest it probably doesn't make much difference at all, if I'm honest, but it's a brush I've used a lot for this exact thing. I know how it works, I know how it feels, and so I opted for the older brush to apply the Huldra Blue. Now, the Huldra Blue doesn't go all over the armour. It just goes in certain sections that I want to be highlighted, that kind of turquoisey bluey colour. So, a lot of the purple and pink is staying, but essentially curved sections and sections that could do with a bit of an emphasis are, are what I tend to go for and, and build up the, uh, 
build up the blue up to the ice yellow that finishes that colour off. It's a lot quicker to do this section than it is to do the purple and the pink, just because you're not going over the entire thing. Now, having done my base of Huldra blue on certain sections, I moved on to Adriatic blue again from uh, from scale scale seventy five. This is, as you can see, a really light, bright blue. Now, with the Adriatic blue, I'm just going over the Huldra blue again, not really paying too much attention to only placing paint over the the darker shade of blue having a bit of overlap is is kind of effective and efficient because it means you get a little bit more of a blend on the edges it makes it it makes it a bit less uniform and yeah i just like the way it looks and that's how i've got that's sort of the habit i've got into when uh, when doing this this stage of it I sometimes find that a second coat of the Adriatic Blue works quite well and just lightens everything up slightly. With the Huldra Blue I tend to do kind of buffing circular motions unless I'm doing a hard edge like on the, uh, the Vulcan Megabolter. For the Adriatic Blue I tend to do more of a stippling motion than an actual buffing or dry brushing motion. It kind of depends on the surface. It's something where you can do any of them but some just work a little better than others. For this particular paint and for this stage, I tend to uh, I tend to mostly stipple it on, and then I'll kind of buff it out a bit if it's a bit too strong. Now, having got that blue to a point where I'm happy with it. I then uh, shift over to using Ice Yellow from Vallejo, which is one of my absolute favourite paints. It's some sort of miracle paint that just seems to make everything look at that bit better when you put it across almost any colour somehow. And uh, that is the colour that I use to finish off that kind of turquoisey light blue stage. Something that quite often happens with this stage is that I will layer it on a bit thick. It's something that I still do occasionally, and unfortunately, this was one of those times where I did exactly that. So, having having done a, a coat of ice yellow, I realised that actually it was too pale. It was not showing enough of the blue, and so I went back to the Adriatic blue to just cover cover it back over again. And and again, it, like just start start from scratch really with the ice yellow. The nice thing is that all that does is just make it lighter overall. It just brings the blue out a bit more and just makes it a bit more pale. And so it doesn't really matter having to do that because you still end up with a nice end result. And it just takes a little bit longer than it would have done otherwise. I, I think I probably would have got the legs done as well for this if I hadn't managed to, uh, to really just get too enthusiastic, too enthusiastic with the ice yellow on the shoulders. Because the issue with doing too much enthusiasm on the shoulders was that having then put ice yellow on the body, I realised that the ice yellow on the body didn't quite match the ice yellow on the shoulders because the shoulders had become a bit more blue. They'd become a bit more of that kind of pale, pale turquoisey blue there, which didn't match the shoulders at all. So then I had to go back over the body with the Adriatic blue again, covering the ice yellow I'd just put on, so that I could then put the ice yellow back onto it in a way that matched the shoulders. I lost some time there, but overall, I don't think that's too bad. 
for an hour, a timed hour, to end up with the result that you can see right now. The upper body is mostly done. Still got the legs, the bolter and the arms to do, but the head, the shoulders, the carapace, the missile launchers, those are all done now. They have their colours. Pretty happy with how that turned out. Now, if you want to see this being done in a more step-by-step -step way, something that's a bit less rapid fire, then there are videos on the channel covering how to how to do this technique and how to paint vehicles with it, uh, which I will link in the description down below. I uh, apologise that this is not the video it was initially supposed to be, but hopefully you at least found that interesting and hopefully it shows how I paint these things. I often get asked how I paint my knights and that I think is as good a way as any as showing you how I do it. So I hope that was interesting, possibly even helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to click anything else that you see on the screen, Patreon video, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, of course there's an affiliate link to support the channel in the description down below. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know if you were going to give it a try. Thank you very much for watching.